Hello, Hi. and welcome to Compensating Actions uh, in Temporal with Go. My name is Emily Fortuna. Hi, I'm Andrew Fitzgibbon, and we are <laughs> developer advocates for Temporal, and we're going to compensate some failed activities today. Absolutely. So, um, why would you want to do compensating this compensating actions pattern? Ah, uh, yes, great question. So. These are for, um, suppose you have distributed systems and microservices everywhere, which inevitably fail. Um, all of them. All of them all fail the all the time. And when they do, you uh, want to make sure your entire process is in a good state. Um, and so as an example, you're transferring money from one account to another account. If transferring it to the second one fails, just doesn't happen, um, you want to make sure that that money goes back to the original account. Um, and you want to make sure that this is more of a roll forward sort of transaction rather than a roll backwards. Because uh, meanwhile, someone else could be taking money um, from that other account. So it's not a snapshot. We're just kind of undoing that thing that failed yep. as necessary. Making it look like it hasn't happened, but allowing other things to happen on the same time. Yep. Yep. The joys of lock-free mm -hmm. transactions. Exactly. To, so today we're doing it in Go, right? Yes, and today we are making breakfast. Excellent. Cereal, specifically. Yes. Uh, so we are illustrating compensating actions um, by making breakfast. Um, breakfast, as everyone knows, consists of three steps. Uh, number one, get the bowl. Number two, add your cereal. Number three, add the milk. Um, and for compensating actions, um, I've coded up two compensations. Uh, number one, put the cereal back in the box. <laughs> this is very true to life. We're, we're trying here. Yes. Uh, and number two, uh, put the bowl away. Because we're pretending it's perfectly clean. Mm -hmm. No um, crumbs of cereal here. Yep. Uh, you know, you can add that. So we're trying to keep it as simple as possible to hear people. Mm -hmm. um, so, to do that, first let's just, uh, we have, in Temporal, we've got workflows and activities. So workflow is like your high level logic for um, what's happening in Temporal. The activities are your, where the actual work is getting done. So you could think of your workflow as kind of like the outline, maybe, mm -hmm. um, and the activities is the, the meat doing the business. Right. It doesn't have the actual pros telling you what happens. It just kind of, well, the workflow doesn't have the actual pros. Table of contents. It's table of contents. Yeah. Or something. And then Strange the activity is the chapter itself. Yes. Um, so uh, we're going to be implementing the table of contents. <laughs> no, the, the high level logic for compensating actions. It goes. So, um, let's first just do those three steps. Right. We'll pretend everything works totally fine um, and do them in order. Yes. So, workflow.execute activity, and then we pass in our context. Uh, get bowl. And then, yes, get, get bowl. And. Sorry, I think that's it. I think there's yeah, no, there's no, no parameters. parameters on this, okay. these ones. And I have to um, check for error. Yep. Um, and uh, we've not used error yet, so we'll need to do colon equals to, yep, to start you. it off. Um, and then. Not equal null. E equals null, right? Uh, if it's not, well, if it's not equal to nil, then we, then oh. we error out. Yes. Do not need parentheses. Nope, oh, not in this one. Too many languages. Uh, return. return. Error. No. Error. <laughs> okay. Um, otherwise, we will continue. Why is this unhappy? That is. Well, wait, was I wrong with the error? Maybe I was wrong with the error. Did we, oh, we. No, that's the return value. Um, oh, uh, but. But this one, we want to have it happen synchronously, mm. right? Um, so our dot get uh, 
because we don't want to end up simultaneously getting the bowl and pouring the cereal out because race conditions end up with cereal all over the counter. That would be bad. Um, there's no return on, on get bowl, I think, so we'll just pass in nil to that. Um, what are we doing now? No, no new variables on left hand of that. Um, oh, maybe with the, the named return, I think it's, uh, we can just drop the column. Because it's already been yep. mentioned. Oh. Yep. Okay. Great. Cool. So we got that. Let's do that Same two more thing. times. Yep. Instead, so. get the bowl, add cereal to the bowl, and then. I already copied that. And add pour in milk. our milk. Great. Okay. okay. So this is everything's gone perfectly. Yep. Um, but things don't always go perfect. Nope. They fail. Things fail. So um, there are two ways we could implement this. Mm -hmm. uh, we could just use the defer keyword because, well, we are but in both ways. We're, we'll use the defer but keyword. But different ways. Yes. Um, we can leverage. So, okay, backing up. Uh, when we run these compensations, um, we want to, there's, for this particular case, there's an ordering that we care about. Mm -hmm. um, we want to put the cereal back in first before we put the bowl away. Right. Um, and we can leverage the fact that the defer keyword, uh, it, it runs from like the bottom up, essentially. It's like a stack. Um, and so we could sort of pepper defer statements throughout this yeah. to add each compensation um, for each activity. Right. But then we add a bunch of very similar looking defer functions everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's an abstracting out defer doesn't really work very well. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, for, for this, we are only doing compensations um, in sequence. You can potentially do compensations mm. in parallel. Mm. Um, we're going to have a little library and leave it, uh, we, we have a code for the actual parallel compensations that you can look up um, afterwards later if you want. But Description below. Yes, uh, but for that reason, we're gonna pull it out into a little library mm -hmm. um, and, and have it separate. Yep, so we'll essentially do a version of that stack-based last in, first out compensation with that list that we've, uh, slice that we've got going on um, and uh, then only have to have one defer rather than a bunch peppered throughout the workflow. Yeah, um, personal preference. So, um, as you can see, we've named this type that's this little slice here, and um, we've got two functions. One where we're gonna add the conversations to conversations, and then one where we are actually calling them to execute. So, um, actually, we maybe before that we can um, well, we'll, we'll implement it and then use it, or yeah. Well, if we so, where are we going to call compensate? Cause it's... That is a great question. So, um, we are in the first place calling compensations because get bowl or add cereal or add milk might fail. Something mm -hmm. might fail. If we assume that something might fail, supposing we failed halfway through getting the bowl, then uh, if we had added that compensation afterwards, um, or even done the defer of running all of the compensations after the call to get bowl, if get bowl fails halfway through, then none of that would have happened. Um, and so uh, we want to make sure then to do all of our um, adding of the compensations before the relevant thing fails. Um, so here we're going to um, uh, instantiate this, this new type that we've got um, and... Yeah, so um, I'm doing something a little fancy here. Okay. Um, what are you doing, Emily? <laughs> so uh, let's say that um, we, the user hits cancel, like I want to stop this workflow. Mm, we'll terminate the workflow, it's done. Um, but 
like you really you really need to get that money back to the original bank account. So you really need this to run no matter what. Um, so we're going to get a um, sort of standalone context, which you can call consider it kind of like forking your context basically, so that when the workflow gets shut down, this context will still refer to a valid context so these last compensations can actually complete. Right, because that original context is going to be in kind of a cancelled state and won't be usable for running the compensations. Yeah, exactly. So new disconnected context. We get give it the, the original, original to fork from. Context. I believe that is it. CTX. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can type. Um, disconnected context. I think it also returns. Oh, yeah. Two things. Two things. Yep. We don't care about that one. Okay, and then um, we're gonna wrap all this in that defer that we were talking about. Right. Um, and so the compensations that compensate here, just to to call it out, is the function that's actually going to run our compensating actions. Yes, which okay. we have not yet implemented. Right. We will implement momentarily. So I'm, yeah, doing this maybe a little ahead of time, but. I was wanting to get the top level stuff first totally. and then go into the details. Yep. Defer function. I am. We're writing in Go today. Yes. It is the afternoon and our brains are tired. All right. And then we're going to check. Um, so this this will execute uh, no matter what. No matter what. Right. So we want to check that there is an error. If there is an error, then we do the compensations. Right. So, and so when this function is. Just to, I'm sure you all know how defer works, but when the function actually runs, that error is going to be whatever that last error was. Um, and so uh, in the case that our, I don't know, adding milk fails, that error is going to be non-nil, and that's the case that we, that we want to run this in. Yes. Okay. Great. So top level stuff is set. Now let's actually go back into implementing this business yes. that we were talking about earlier. Um. So adding is just adding, right? We're, we're just um, putting it on to the end of that list. Or slice, list uh, of comprehensions. Uh, append, oh, just yeah. Add. And activity. Um, we wanna, what are we appending? The, oh, the two, two, yeah, two, two S. S, but dereferenced. With the value of. Yeah, okay. Cool. Appended. That was hard. Great, difficult. <laughs> Now that we've got them all, we've got to loop through, but we've got to make sure we loop through them in the proper order. Yes, in right? reverse order, because it's yes. like a stack. Um, yep. We want to put the cereal back in the box before we put the bowl away. Yep. Putting a bowl full of cereal back in the cabinet, well, maybe that's for you, not for me. Not in this household. <laughs> not in this house. Okay, so length of S, whoa, what just happened? Ooh. Minus one. Uh, Greater than or equal to zero. Minus. Uh, oh, thank you. Haha, <laughs> I'm on autopilot here. <laughs> Every for loop goes I plus plus. I mean, so I've always written. vast majority of them are. Um, okay, so now we're going to call our execute activity. Just copy and paste in there. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to call. Uh, we want to get s v at the value of i. Right. Um, and we um, want to check the error. Uh, yes. So, so the something? the function here. No, you're you're good. Yeah. We want to check the error because the function here is the actual compensating action. Um, and I guess in this case it would be. If the compensating action fails, given all of Temporal's retrying things and, and trying to make it work as much as we can, if it fails at this point, we really mm -hmm. want to escalate to like have a user or an operator actually go in to put the bowl away. Yeah. Um, and so at this point, we do actually just want to return it, or log it, rather. Get logger. There's not much else we can do at this point if that, those fail. And just say um, error. Two R, three R's. <laughs> Compensate. Many R's as we can give it. Um. Want to do? Uh, oh. Yeah. Dot error on the get logger. Oh. Uh, 
So git logger needs the context, but then... Oh, dot error. Yeah. Yep, that one. And then in here, do we... Uh, um, I think like, we could do... So key val of like the... Um, so the, the workflow logger expects... So it, it essentially writes out JSON for what happens out of this. Um, mm. And so it wants key value for the additional parameters after okay. this. So then like error and then the value of the object. Yeah. Great. Exactly. Okay. So, um, is that it? Yeah. And um, I'll make a note here that um, on the execute activity, we're doing this synchronously. Yes. Um, not in parallel. Correct. Um, yeah, if we wanted to do it in parallel, um, we could say workflow dot add future mm -hmm. um, and have them all run and then call get to like collect them is kind of how I like to think yeah, about it. Uh, but... Yeah, join the threads as it yes. were. <laughs> That's the correct terminology. Um, but here we want to do them synchronously so that we don't accidentally, I don't know, put the bowl away while the cereal is being poured out. Yes, yes, because if they could execute in any order, yeah. It'd be kind of weird. Yes. <laughs> in this particular case, it depends on your use case, really, whether you want to allow parallel config right. or not. Um, cool, so let's Give run it. it. Oh, cereal milk. Great. So that's the happy case, everything okay. worked. Let's add an error to um, test it not working. Yeah. So, uh, error, errors.new? Errors.new, or return, return errors.new with a string message. I have, oh no, the milk has <laughs> the, been spoiled. Yes, and the computer is talking to me. I always think those errors <laughs> are silly. Um, and I'm doing it myself. Uh, import. oh, it'll import. Um, can you think we might have missed something in the workflow? Yes. Which is to add the compensations. Good catch. <laughs> yes. Um, right. So uh, we want to do that. So compensations. Because right, we've add. got that add compensation thing that can help us. So put bowl away. And we're not executing it. We're just doing, adding it to be executed later. Right, and again, as we mentioned earlier, we're doing it before the thing itself in case that thing fails while it's happening so that we already have the record of the compensation that needs to happen. Yes, yep, all right. Okay. Now, give that another go. Do not add emojis, that's not what we wanted. Okay, start it up, run it. No. Uh, so we got the bowl, added milk. Yep. Then we had an error. Attempt one. I had a problem adding milk. Put the cereal away and then put the bowl away. Great. In we... the order that we wanted. Exactly. So now we've got a workflow that makes us breakfast, but if the milk fails to be added to the bowl, then we can put everything away. And you will not have breakfast. Nope. It's sad. But your code can handle that case, which is great. <laughs> uh, thanks again for tuning in, and uh, we will see you next time when we implement something else very exciting. All right. Thanks, everyone.